How is our Delta Hedge portfolio performing as the price of Bitcoin moves? What margin usage should we target for the portfolio? And what adjustments to the hedging settings can we make as the portfolio increases in size? These are the questions we will be answering in today's video. This is the second video in this live option trading series, where we are currently Delta Hedging a small portfolio of short options on Deribit. Today we will add some more positions to the portfolio and adjust the settings of the Delta Hedging tool from Greeks Live as we go. At the end of the previous video in this series, we were left with a short put and a delta hedge short on the perpetual. Today, let's first short another call on the same expiry as the short put. For strike selection, we will go with something close to a 20 delta, which in this case is the 40,000 strike. This is close to the edge of the expected move as well, which can be seen highlighted in purple in the strike column in the option chain. The expected move is essentially a one standard deviation move as implied by the at the money implied volatility. It's just a handy way to quickly visualize what the at the money implied volatility is actually implying about what range the underlying price is likely to be in by the time the options expire. The implied volatility figure that is being used and the size of the expected move up or down are shown in the top right of each expiry in the option chain. We can currently sell this 40,000 strike call option for around 63% implied volatility. We'll cover tracking both historical and implied volatility, and judging what might or might not be good levels to buy or sell volatility at in future videos. For now though, we're happy to sell at this level, so let's place the order. There is currently a gap between the best bid and ask, so let's try and get filled in the middle, at a price of 0 0.0105 Bitcoin. After about 2 minutes, the order is filled and we are then short both a put and a call on the 17th of November expiry. The addition of the short call leaves our delta a little unbalanced though, and outside of our current delta thresholds in the delta hedging tool of plus or minus 0 0.01. A few seconds after our short call is filled, this breach of the delta threshold results in the delta hedger coming in and buying some perpetual contracts to neutralize the delta of our portfolio back to zero. We can see that before the delta hedge adjustment, we are short the perpetual for $360, and after the delta hedge adjustment, we are long the perpetual for $470. The buy trade can be seen in the trade history on Deribit, in the transaction log, or on the delta hedger page. We can see here the trade that bought $830 of the perpetual. After leaving our delta hedge short strangle alone for a few days, our portfolio has begun to show a profit, but it's time to start adding some more positions on the next expiry. We can see that our margin usage is still quite low, with both initial margin and maintenance margin below 10%. So there is plenty of room to open additional positions while still remaining within sensible risk limits. If maintenance margin breaches 100%, this is when forced liquidations would occur, and of course this is certainly something we want to avoid. However, we can still comfortably use more margin than we are currently using without being close to liquidation. The idea is to have position sizes large enough to generate a reasonable return on capital while retaining sufficient spare capital to cope with any necessary adjustments and potential drawdowns. Sometimes it may be a good strategic decision to be on the sidelines, waiting for better opportunities, but for today we are assuming that we want to be in the market with our capital set to work. I'm typically short volatility in some form much more often than long volatility. And indeed, currently, I wish to be short volatility into the end of the year. With the Bitcoin ETF decisions expected in early January, though, I will likely be much more cautious about selling in the early January expiries. One way we can put more of our capital to work now, while still expressing our current short volatility view, is to add another short strangle on the next weekly expiry in December. We're going to opt for roughly a 20 delta on either side. On the put side, we sell the 33,500 strike put, and we managed to get filled immediately in the middle at 0.0125 Bitcoin. On the call side, we sell the 42,000 strike. We enter a price in the middle of 0.013 Bitcoin, which takes about four minutes to fill. Even though our position is currently relatively delta neutral, because we have increased the number of contracts we are holding, this will result in the delta of our portfolio changing more as the underlying price moves around. In other words, our gamma is larger. To keep hedging costs to a minimum, we don't want the hedging tool to make adjustments too frequently, so we'll need to make a small adjustment to the settings to take account of our new larger portfolio size. Let's increase the delta thresholds to plus or minus 0.015 for now, and we may increase this again in future. To do this, 
we enter the desired values of 0 0.015 as the thresholds and then click save to apply the changes. We are now short to strangle in two different expiry dates. We will leave the account for a few days, then come back to check on the progress. Four days later, on the 16th of November, we can see that the price of Bitcoin has had a couple of large moves, first up and then back down. The price remains within the price range of our short strikes, so all of the options are still out of the money, and the options have lost some value to time decay. In fact, as they are expiring tomorrow, the options in the 17th of November expiry have lost almost all of their value. However, the price movements of Bitcoin have been enough to trigger a few delta hedging trades. These hedge trades have cost about the same as the time decay earned via the options, resulting in the portfolio still only showing a small profit overall, with the equities sitting at around 0.2507 Bitcoin. The next day, the price remains in the same area, and the 17th of November options have expired. The settlement entries can be seen in the transaction log. As both the call and the put expired out of the money, there was nothing to pay at expiry. The short strangle in the 1st of December expiry is still open, and we have the same delta hedge position in the perpetual, but this is all that is left. Our margin usage is very low again, so let's put more of our capital to work and short some strangles on the next weekly expiry, which is the 8th of December. Instead of selling into the bids, or leaving limit orders at a fixed price, this time we're going to leave some IV orders. With this type of order, we enter a value for implied volatility, and the limit price of the order is updated every few seconds to be equivalent to this value, or the closest valid price at least. The first implied volatility order we're going to place is on the 32,500 put, which is currently a 15 delta option. We can see in the option chain that the best ask has an implied volatility of 52.8%, and the mark price has an implied volatility of just under 52%. If we use an implied volatility of 52%, this should stay on the best ask for now then. In the order form for this option, we need to enable the advanced order form settings, and then toggle the IV order type on. We will use a value of 52% for now. Once we confirm the order, we can see it sitting on the best ask of 0.011 Bitcoin. This limit price will change as time passes and the underlying price moves, to keep the limit price close to 52% implied volatility. We're now going to place similar orders for the 33,000 strike put and the 41,000 and 42,000 strike calls. While those orders are being placed, just a quick note on IV orders. I find these types of orders useful when I'm expecting to get filled soon, but not immediately, and I don't want to have to keep manually editing several orders to be on the best ask. If the underlying price moves significantly though, these types of orders could result in some undesirable behavior as the volatility surface moves around. So while they do offer some level of automation, I would typically keep an eye on these types of orders while they're open, and would not leave them unattended for extended periods of time. The exception to this would be when I leave an order at a very favourable price, such as trying to buy an option at 1% implied volatility, as we did in the previous video in this series. After fine tuning a couple of the percentages, we now have four implied volatility orders working in the market, two on puts and two on calls all in the 8th of December expiry. We will leave these open and come back once we have some fills. We rejoin the account about three hours later and all four of the orders have been filled. If we'd simply sold into the best bid for each of the options when we initially placed the orders, we could have collected a total of 0 0.0049 Bitcoin. The total received from selling via the implied volatility orders though was 0 0.00515 Bitcoin. This method won't always result in better fills like this, and indeed we do run the risk of not getting filled at all, but in this case we did collect a larger premium by using the IV orders to sell the options. We are now short three different strangles across two different expiry dates, and our delta is approximately zero, thanks to our delta hedge in the perpetual. The addition of the positions in the 8th of December expiry has also increased our margin usage to around 20%, so more of our capital is being put to use, but there is still room to add more, which we will do soon. The next day, we hop into the account for a quick progress check, and we can see that the underlying price has barely moved. Implied volatility has also decreased a little, as can be seen by the decrease in DVOL. DVOL, or the Deribit Implied Volatility Index, is a very useful way to track how implied volatility is evolving over time via a single index. In future videos, we will also bring in some more detailed ways of tracking both realized and implied volatility. 
The combination of time passing with barely any price movement and the fall in implied volatility has generated some profit for the portfolio. This type of action is exactly what we're looking for with this type of short vol portfolio, as the options lose value as time passes and volatility falls, while the lack of price movement keeps the delta hedging costs to a minimum. We can see the equity is now around 0.2522 Bitcoin. The hedge thresholds for the delta hedging tool have been increased a little to plus or minus 0.02, which will reduce the frequency of the hedge trades a little, while still being low enough relative to our position sizes to be triggered by any larger moves. All of the option positions are showing a profit, with only a very small loss resulting from the delta hedge in the perpetual. With everything working as intended, we can continue to wait for more time to pass and for more value to bleed out of the options. Five days later, we can see that the price of Bitcoin has had a couple of sizable moves, but remains within the same price range. In the account, we can see a small loss has been made since the previous check, with our equity down from 0.2522 to 0.2516. The cause of this loss is the delta hedging that was triggered by the movements in the underlying price. Even though we increased the delta thresholds a little, the size of these price moves was more than enough to trigger some delta hedging trades, and as these trades were in both directions, this resulted in some losses. The margin usage is still not too high, so let's add to our portfolio by shorting some strangles in the 15th of December expiry as well. In our previous adjustments, we left the delta hedger on with the same settings while we were adding positions. This actually resulted in a couple of unnecessary trades, first hedging the put we shorted and then hedging the call we shorted a few minutes later. If we are going to place multiple trades in a short space of time with deltas that partially cancel each other out, it would be preferable to pause the delta hedging until after all the trades have been executed. This way only the resulting net effect on delta will need to be hedged, rather than hedging each fill individually. This time, before we start entering orders to sell more options, let's increase the delta thresholds to plus or minus 0.2. This will leave the tool on, but will mean we won't be triggering any adjustments by adding small positions. Alternatively, of course, we could simply turn the tool off completely while we make our manual adjustments, and then turn it back on when we are finished. With the thresholds now set very wide, let's add some more positions. We will use IV orders again, trying to get filled at better prices than selling directly into the best bits. The implied volatility percentage field and the limit price field are linked. So when we change one, the other will be updated to be equivalent. We can see here when the limit price is adjusted to 0 0.0235, the IV changes to 56.6. We then edit this to be a little lower, so our order is more likely to stay on the best ask. And when we change the percentage to 56.5, the limit price field changes to 0 0.0234. It's worth noting though, that the minimum tick size for prices this large is currently 0 0.0005. So 0 0.0234 is not actually a valid limit price. Therefore, when we submit our IV order at this percentage, we can see that the limit price is adjusted to the closest valid price of 0 0.0235 in the order book. Similar orders are placed for several other options. And after about 20 minutes, we have shorted three puts and two calls in the 15th of December expiry. Initial margin and maintenance margin are 42 and 35 respectively now and this is about as high as we will go intentionally for now. These percentages may increase, of course, if the position goes against us, but this is a good level of margin usage to aim for with this type of position. It puts a lot of our capital to work, while also giving a good amount of room to manage if needed, or even add if a particularly attractive opportunity presents itself. There is one more thing to do before leaving the portfolio to work. Remember, we widen the delta thresholds of the hedger while we were adding to our positions to avoid any unnecessary trades. Now that we have added the desired positions, it's time to set this back to a tighter range. They were previously set at plus or minus 0 0.02. However, we have nearly doubled the number of contracts we are holding, so let's set them to plus or minus 0 0.04 for now. And now, with the final portfolio update for this video, we rejoin the action four days later. The price action has been very stable, with the price remaining within the range of our short strangles. There has been some delta hedging required in the last four days, but only a small amount, so it hasn't cost us much. In our Deribit account, we can see the portfolio is starting to make a decent profit, with our equity increasing from 0.2516 to 0.2558 since the last update. This means the account is now up a little over 2% since we started, which was three weeks ago. All of the option positions are in profit. 
This is to be expected as the underlying price has barely moved and implied volatility has decreased a little, as we can see on the Devol page. When I recorded this clip I forgot to also show futures positions on the auction page, but we can see on the Perpetual page that we also currently have a small position on the Perpetual. We now have option positions in three different expiries, all short strangles in this case, and their deltas are being dynamically hedged by the Greeks Live tool, using the Perpetual. We have our margin usage up to a reasonable level, but still have room to adjust if needed. In the next video in this series, we will continue to track this portfolio, and discuss the advantages and disadvantages of using the Perpetual for our delta hedge versus the dated futures contracts, including how we can efficiently move positions between the two. If you're enjoying the series so far, and you haven't subscribed yet, click subscribe below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.